Hey everyone, happy Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going back to one of the most basic and fundamental features of Adobe Muse, and that would be the master page or master pages. If you look here at the bottom of our sitemap, there's a section dedicated to masters where we can create page layouts that repeat on many pages. And uh, for example, just to help visualize this before we get started, uh, here's the website that we're essentially building here, emmygranis.com. Uh, she makes some of the most beautiful jewelry I've ever seen. And uh, we've got a page background, a page fill, or browser background rather, a page fill, a logo at the top, a subtitle, and this global navigation. And as we click through the website, um, a lot of those elements are on every page. I mean, at least the elements at the top of the screen. And uh, in the case of the shop, there are some new elements that are specific to just the shop area. Uh, but essentially, there are a lot of pages and a lot of elements that repeat on many, if not all, of those pages. Uh, the exception being the fact that shop is sort of its own subcategory that then has its own elements that repeat on every page. And this, I think, is where master pages start being underutilized. If we go back over to Adobe Muse, you can see at the bottom here that I have uh, some master pages. And if I click on global, uh, global is, is a term used in web design. Uh, it's a term used in the web uh, to mean that this is sort of applied to everything, everywhere. For those of you who write CSS, you may have a global CSS file that has the rules spelled out that are used uh, really site-wide. So global essentially is another word for site-wide uh, as it's used. So we have the logo here, Emigranis. We have the subtitle text, and we have uh, our main navigation, our primary navigation that repeats on every single page. And that's why this is called global, because this all repeats on every single page. Now, if we go back to our sitemap here and we look at these uh, shop pages, let me go ahead and click and drag the master to apply it to all of these pages here. Uh, so it is a click and a drag to apply a master. You can also do a right click on a page, go down to masters, and you can choose which master you want to apply. Uh, but the click and drag is uh, often much quicker. Another thing that you can do is click and drag next to or below a page to create a new page using that master. If you're trying to just create a new page with the little plus signs, it's going to take the master layout of the page that is lit up orange. See how there's this little orange border around it? Uh, when I click the plus sign, because this page has global applied, clicking that plus sign gives me another global. Uh, in the future, uh, later in the tutorial, the near future, uh, when I have a different master applied, when I click the plus sign, it will apply that different master. So it is contextual and based on the context of the page that you're creating the new page from, if that makes any sense. So now that I have the global master applied, when I go and double click here, uh, here we have our logo, we have our main navigation, shop is uh, highlighted, uh, but we're missing our sub navigation. And where most people I think are going wrong here is they're either adding the sub navigation to all of these sub pages uh, and copying and pasting and copying and pasting, and then having to go back and make changes. Uh, or they're applying it to the global master or making a completely separate master where they copy and paste all of the global elements over to the shop master, uh, which is fundamentally wrong. I mean, you're wasting some time here. Uh, if you're copying and pasting, really, if you're doing the same work over and over and over again, there's probably a better way. So if we go here to shop pages, which has just these new elements that repeat on all the shop pages, what we can do is we can apply the global master to the shop pages master. You can apply a master to a master to a master to a master to a master, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and what that allows us to do is take the global elements, apply it to the shop. Then if, for example, we have uh, a shop page that has additional details, we could take the shop page master and apply it to the shop page details master and have these sort of cascade. So the C in CSS is cascading. We have cascading style sheets and code. And essentially, Adobe Muse is allowing us to cascade our styles or cascade our global elements just like we would with CSS. So we have that power, we have that control. Now, one thing you might find here is on this master page where I have these different categories, uh, how do we light up the category that we are on? For instance, when we're in the all category or the earrings category uh, on emigranis.com, it is black instead of gray to show that that is where we currently are. Uh, the way we do that is actually really, really easy, and it takes place on the master page, so we only have to do it one time. And what we can do is we can click on all these. I'll hold shift to select them all. We go to active, 
and we make sure that the active state looks the way we want it to. So in this case, it's black. Uh, so here, over here, I have the color switched to black for active. Now what active means in this context is if we are already on that page, meaning we are already on the page that this text box hyperlinks to, then it will apply that style. So all is hyperlinked to shop all. Earrings is hyperlinked to shop earrings. I think you get the idea here. So when we are on the page that the button is hyperlinked to, the style changes. So let's go ahead and apply the shop style or the shop master to these two pages here. And then we'll click and take a look. Now our spacing, we have a little bit of a spacing issue here. And you may run into this problem when you're dealing with master pages that the spacing isn't quite right. Uh, but if we double click on shop pages, you could see that uh, this line here for where the header ends is above our sub navigation. So rather than moving everything on every page, I can pull this down. I can go back over and look at these shop pages and everything else got pushed down because everything else started below this line and when the line moves, the content moves too. So we're already saving a ton of time there, not dealing with copying and pasting or doing repeating manual labor. So take a look, all is highlighted. It's not part of this page, it's part of the master that's been applied, uh, but because it is an active black link and because it links to the page that we're currently on, it switches to that active state and it lights up in that black color. And if we go over to earrings, earrings is that black color because it hyperlinks to this earrings page and we are on it. And that is where the active state comes into play. So we're already saving a ton of time by not having to copy and paste. We don't have to style our navigation on every page. We could do these things one time and they apply everywhere. So that's already a pretty big deal. Another thing that you can do is, uh, let's go back over to emigranis.com. Uh, I don't have my tab bar open. Let me open a new tab so you can see the title of the tab that we're on here. It says shop and then we have, uh, I believe that's an M dash. And uh, we're currently on the earrings page. We're currently in the shop section. But if I go over to blog, it says blog and then that M dash and then emigranus. So the pages uh, are all suffixed. Uh, this would be considered a suffix because it's at the end with emigranus. So we have the SEO advantages there. And if somebody were to bookmark this page, uh, they would see emigranus in the bookmark. They wouldn't just see shop. So another advantage to the master pages is that you can do a right click on the master page. You can go to page properties and in the page properties for a master page, you can go to metadata and you can set a page title suffix. So using a page title suffix, you could say uh, dash emmy granis. Uh, I think in her case, she may have had all caps, but uh, you get the idea. You also may want to put a space here, so that way it's space dash space and then the name and then click OK. So this is called earrings, right? So if I open up earrings, if I preview this in the browser, uh, because that master page was cascaded through, it now says earrings and then the dash and then Emmy Granis. And the reason I say cascaded through is because when we go back and look from earlier, we didn't apply the global master directly to earrings. We applied shop pages to earrings, but global is applied to shop pages. Therefore, it cascades from here to here to here meaning those properties that we set here ultimately end up here. So again, we're saving a ton of time by not having to suffix every single page title and we get to keep our page titles clean and really just save time and stay organized. And that's what this is all about. Hopefully you guys like this tutorial. This is just about starting off on the right foot. I know it's a little late. Uh, I'm <laughs> doing a master page tutorial, I think three to four years into the game, but I don't think there's a better time uh, to learn this than, than now, really. And you may want to go back and make changes to sites that you've already developed. So hopefully you guys like this. If you do, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you need some jewelry, go to emigranis.com. Get, your, get yourself something nice. Get your, uh, your lady something nice. I know that my audience is, what, 86% male. So get your lady something nice. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already.